All right, let's talk about uh, where I came from. Hell. Uh, Transparents. Uh, no, uh, radio. Radio controversies. Hell. I, so hell. Look, I'm still, <laughs> maybe, but I'm still a sucker for a good radio controversy. I think radio, radio controversies are fun because, like, podcasts, they deal with autistic people and, like, the scum of the earth and dirt babies are fucking awful. Uh, that sounded racist, didn't it? Yeah, I don't like yeah. it. I'm against it. Sorry, Marquise. I don't mean dirt babies like black-skinned people. I mean, like, people who live in the dirt. So, what? I was just clarifying in case there was any bigotry. I've been in the dirt. Uh, that sounded For a very, large portion of my life. That sounded very poetic. I've been in the dirt. And I've been in the clouds. And I prefer it in the clouds. But the dirt suits me just fine. Sounds like the start of a detective show. Anyway, the way you're looking at me, I can tell I'm not funny, so let's move on. I enjoy radio controversies because a radio controversy, you've got to earn it. You know? You've got to piss off people who are passively listening to the radio. The internet, it's everybody. You can piss people off with just, like, the way you snap your fingers. It's not impressive. Anybody can piss anybody off mm -hmm. on the internet. If you put the wrong fucking punctuation mark on a Reddit post, all of a sudden you're the biggest dipshit who ever lived. In radio, you really got to make people mad. I mean, some of those people still have to send in letters, for Christ's oh, sake. Oh, you've done it. Oh, man. You've made I... people kind of mad. I've riled them up. Big time. He riled the masses, let's be honest. Oh, man. <laughs> so this guy, remember the guy in Boston not long ago who made the black guy steal in the car joke? Yeah. There was nothing wrong with that. He didn't have to get off the air and go to sensitivity training and be suspended, but they did it anyway. That station, WEEI, which is a big sports uh, talk station in, in Boston for years, uh, they got another guy who looks like he might be suspended now. Is it maybe just something about Boston? Come on. It might be because it is race related. Again. I've been to Boston and there's some trash monkeys over there. What? See, now that sounded racist. I mean like trash people. You don't mean black people. I call you a trash monkey all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> so this guy on WEEI in Boston, they're talking about their five favorite nips on the Greg Hill show. Now, first of all, this is a uh, this is a hacky radio topic if I've ever heard one. It's very hacky, but I'd get on board with y it. You know what this is? The five favorite nips uh, category. You know what this is for a sports talk station? It signifies the fact that the NFL is over and the NBA playoffs haven't started yet. Mm -hmm. So they're killing time. There's nothing to talk about. It's filler. Uh, I think tomorrow are the first Sweet 16 games for the NCAA tournament. So you got nothing to talk about there. There's no NFL. Free agency has kind of died down a little bit. And the NBA is in their stretch run. So you got to fill the time. And on radio, you go, hey, what are the five? What are your five favorite nips? That's kind of a lame, shitty, hacky conversation. One of the guys decided to spice it up. Okay. Five favorite nips. Show personality Courtney Cox, not that one, suggested the prompt with Boston City Councilor Richard Arroyo seeking to outlaw the small bottles of alcohol in the city because of how frequently they're littered. Chris, uh, so, oh, they're five favorite nips. They're talking about booze. <laughs> so we're not even talking about tits. They're not even talking about tits. They're Be talking sure, bottles. They're talking about five favorite nips. They're mm -hmm. talking about nips of liquor. Yeah. Little yep, tiny yep. bottles because they're going to ban them. Because banning them obviously will prevent people from littering. Sure. Do you know how to pronounce this name? I don't know this woman. Nina Kimes. Uh, who is she? Don't know. Okay. <laughs> well, Chris Curtis, one of the co-hosts. Now, the irony of this is I think Chris Curtis was one of the guys who was on with the dude who got suspended. And Chris Curtis interjected, Mina Kimes is his favorite nip. Oh, so he went with tits, but they were talking about... Oh. No, 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 no. Can I show you a picture of Mina Kimes? He, yes. said, one of, he said, my favorite nip is Mina Kimes. And uh, if you guys don't know who Mina Kimes is, there she is. She is of Japanese descent. Yeah. The racial slur for which would be the shorthand for nipple. <laughs> Are you shitting me? Oh, boy, did he swing for the fences or what? <laughs> but I didn't even know that. You didn't know that? Oh, you're Absolutely so, they're so not. innocent at that No, age. I only know this word. Well, no, you don't need to write it down. There's only two of them. I understand. I know. I that's Chinese people. You don't even have the right nationality. 
What um, the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm not up on my slurs. Is that a crime? It's, uh, you didn't even write down the right one. There's only two uh, for Japanese well, people. Well, help me out here. Nip and... Don't oh, say sh- that. <laughs> Don't fucking say it then. Sorry. God, I'm sorry, YouTube. There, that's the other one. Well, that's just dumb because that's just shorthand. Oh, man. So... Uh, Wait, so you... Oh, you said the other one. So nip comes from the fact that in Japanese, Japan is Nippon. So they in World War II, we would call them nips. So why is that bad then if it's just shorthand for Because something? we're not supposed to say it. <laughs> it's like a Japanese person, but instead you shorten it, you call them a... Yeah. All right. Now... I want to get on the right side of history here. Okay. Because, you know, we're not it, on the right track yet. When it comes to me and radio controversies, a lot of people have uh, criticized me and say I'm on the wrong side of history on all these. Um, well, they said, what are your five favorite nips? And they meant liquor. Okay. And this guy goes, <laughs> Mina Kimes, who's a beautiful Japanese woman. She's very pretty. I want to <laughs> say, so I'm on the right side of history. You can watch how far I've grown now. As a broadcaster, you've seen all my controversies. You can see how far I've grown. <clears throat> Get ready for Aaron to be on the right side of history. And favorite nip is Mina Kimes. Ready? Very excited. My position on it. <clears throat> fucking hilarious. <laughs> you, That's a fucking good one. Right. Come on. He didn't know, so what the heck? Holy shit. That, <laughs> yes, he did. No, I don't think he knew they were talking about alcohol. You think he did and he just yes, said that otherwise? Yes, he was being funny. You're not giving him enough credit. No, he, I'm not. He knew the direction they were going, and he went the racist way, and it was great. It was really funny. Mina Kimes is not going to be harmed by that joke. Nobody was hurt by that She'll joke. She'll never hear it. Well, now she will. Oh. But before, she wouldn't have heard it if people... Here's the problem with the internet, is that somebody says something harmless on the radio. If everybody just shuts the fuck up and enjoys the bit... She'll never know. It won't hurt her. But the internet people are like, I have to copy this to make sure Nimina Kaim sees this. Why would you make her watch that? Why would you make her see that? They all had fun. Everybody had a good laugh. She'll never be the wiser. Why would you put that painful term in front of her, you fucking idiot? She's not going to give you a hand job in for it. In fairness, he did say that she's his favorite. It's not like he was being derogatory. Right. It's, it's a like, compliment. Come exactly. On. I don't know. It's like when I say in boxing, Deontay Wilder's my favorite. I, I mean it as a compliment. Mm-hmm. See, Sandy said she never heard it either. I'm not the only one. Women just And aren't... why is it cool to say that word in reference to alcohol then? Women are just not up word. on their racial slurs. No. Uh, oh, God, this Draylock guy is just so, he is so autistic. He's like, so is this like generic red bar? No, I don't have a colostomy bag. I'm in good health. I'm on camera. We do a funny show, and we have topics, and we get to them. I don't sit here and suck my dick for 45 minutes before getting to the point. Uh, Triple N with 220. Thank you very much, buddy. Appreciate it. Thank you. You see, we talk about this story, and the chat just goes ape shit for it. I got to pick a, a funny, or I got to pick a good spot for me to start here. Uh, Julia says, April thinks they were going boobs and he went racist. See, that's what made it funny. Right, it's a and, misdirection. Right, and it was about neither of those things. No, it wasn't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> see, people are now coming up. They're saying, Aaron, you're wrong. There's more than two racial slurs for Japanese people. <laughs> and our audience is incredibly proud of themselves for naming yeah, all of them I thought us. I thought this was one, Let's too. Let's just keep writing them down. Yep, that yeah, is right? Yep, that is definitely so one that, of them. So that is the Japanese one? That's, uh, I think that one's or pretty much Asian. Or is that all-encompassing Asian? Yeah, that one's a coverall, I think. I love coveralls. Yeah. That one just get that one knocks it all out in one fell swoop. Uh, I can't read that. Holy shit! There's a lot of stuff I cannot read. Uh, yeah, where Paul Polito says, "Yeah, how dare you? Aaron is much more a Kumia wannabe than a Mike David clone. Exactly, a more successful broadcaster." Uh, <laughs> Let's just see here. Oh my god! Uh, I, I look. I'm trying to read some of these guys. I fucking can't. It's not good. I cannot read these. I think they called Mr. Miyagi at, yes, they called him that. Uh, Shaft wants there to be a new uh, produce character called Niptif. <laughs> okay, but which type is he going to be? I don't know. We'll have to think that one through. Maybe a water chestnut? 
Isn't that? No, I think he should just be a nipple. He can take Ginsburg's uh, nipple I out of the box. I can take Ginsburg's nipples. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, guys, these are really terrible. You guys, I can't you, read these. You guys know way too many of these. <laughs> this is, um, I don't know whether to be impressed or appalled. I'm not, <laughs> not quite sure. Alex Bernal just goes with sushi. <laughs> All right. Why don't we listen to the clip and we'll see how bad it was. So, begs- by the way, this David Cullinane guy on Twitter is like the radio rat of Boston. Like, he's the guy who snitched out and dimed out the guy who said, oh, those are the two guys that stole your car. Hey. And now he's diming out this guy for his uh, nipple or nip drinking joke. Nipple drinking. Yeah, this fucking Dave Cullinane is a nudge. I don't like this guy. But let's check it out. It's the question, top five nips. Uh, oh, yes. That's a great one. Because mm. uh, uh, Dr. Oh, McGillicuddy's, up- I think, is number one uh, or two. Screwball say, also up uh, there. I'd probably go Mina Kimes. And um, Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> this guy's face immediately. <laughs> this guy gets it. <laughs> that face is funny. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And you know what I like about this guy? He waited back on that joke. He sat there quietly. She was interrupting a lot. They were all trying to get a riff going. He sat back there. He had his line, and he had the confidence to wait it out and play it through. Is this an Eastern term, though? I've never, like, East no. Coast term. I've never heard of, like, a little thing of booze called a nip. Did your before. grandfather fight in World War II? I don't fucking know. I didn't know my grandpa's. Well, mine, both of mine did. And that was a common term for the Japanese people, but it was also, yeah, a common term for a little, yeah, a little nip of whiskey. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. It's new I, to me. I heard the term nipper, hard R. So that's it. for the booze, not for Japanese people. I never heard a Japanese person call. That would be fun. I'm if Japanese, only going to call it that now. That would be great if Japanese people just started calling each other my nippa. I would like a quick nip of whiskey after the show. There you go. Screwball say, also up uh, there. I'd probably go Mina Kimes. And um, Fireball. Fireball. I love his face. Like, fireball. I'm not taking it to You're right about, <laughs> And look at him. <laughs> He's that son of a bitch. That dirty bastard just looks right over well, at that guy. He knew this guy thought it was funny from the word go. He just looks right over his coast. See, shit like this, where the audience can't necessarily see you in large numbers, I will I will freely admit it. This kind of shit makes me miss radio a little bit. I believe it. When you of could, course. When you could be in the studio and you could shoot that little shit eating grin at someone, you go, see what I do there? I shoot you grin yeah. sometimes. I know, but everyone can see it. I, I like the sneakiness and the childishness of getting away with it and then staring at somebody. Going, right? I like that shit. Maybe you should that. get a part-time radio gig. Uh, if I, I go could, work with oh my wood. God. If I could, if I went back to radio right now, I would wreck the place all over again in a good way. I would, I would grab the audience in a uh, a week. Uh. About the McGillicuddy, though, but do you like the purple or the root beer? Notice how the rest of them. Though, let's go back to that. Notice how the rest of them just went whoom, right to booze. Yeah. Past it. They did not acknowledge that comment at all. That's a great one. Because mm. uh, right, oh, Dr. McGillicuddy's, I think, is number one uh, or two. Screwball say, also up uh, there. I'd probably go Mina Kimes. And um, Fireball. Fireball. <laughs> like, fireball. I'm not taking it. T- <laughs> I, I like these two. But they went right. They steamrolled right over that guy's line. It was too good. By the way, this is the kind of talk you get on a sports show. No offense when you put a woman on it. In sports talk radio. Yeah. Is like, oh, what are, you guys, what are your five favorite nips of boo? And like, she's going to have a serious conversation about her five favorite. Oh, I like Fireball too. It's crazy. Don't you guys like Fireball? That guy took it in the direction you should take it in. That's not even sports talk though. No. Like I said, I mean, fo- football's over and basketball playoffs haven't started yet. And so. I, I know I don't belong on sports talk. I enjoy getting my sports talk from a man. <laughs> yeah. here's <laughs> You know what I like about the New York Post is that the first thing they write after the video clip is, Kimes is half Korean, not Japanese. Oh, God. Well, then it's doubly not offensive. Then what are we right. arguing about? We missed, but it was still funny. It's perfect. Uh, now, it would have been funnier if they would have said, hey, who are your five favorite cooks? And he said, Mina Kimes. And he went, oh, cooks. Never mind. That could have been. See, because then it would be. I love that the New York Post, they're, they're, they're talking about how offensive this is. And they're going, pfft. He didn't even get the racial slur right. <laughs> like, what oh, he, I'm sorry. Let me work harder at it. What he said was so offensive, and it's terrible to say that. But they're like, well, it's actually not even that great either because she's not even Japanese. It's like, I thought you guys said we're not supposed to be talking that way. So why does it matter if she's Japanese or not? Uh, none of Hill, Cox, or co-host Jermaine Wiggins responded to Curtis. 
an executive producer for the show. Chad Finn of the Boston Globe reported that the station did not respond to comment, but wrote on Twitter that corporate claims he meant Mila Kunis, not Mina Kimes. That still doesn't work. <laughs> that, that, is, that still is, doesn't work, Dude, right? at least have the fucking balls to say what you said. That's Don't so sit, dumb. That's such a bullshit, poorly thought out excuse. Right. He meant Mina, uh, Mila Kunis. He just happened to say someone who's Asian with the word nip in it. Yeah, that's going to fly. ESPN responded to the incident, telling the Globe there is no place for these types of hateful comments, which were uncalled for and extremely offensive. Yeah, they're always uncalled for until Kendrick Perkins makes them about white people. Then we just forget about it the next day. I will repeat, they didn't even say anything shitty about her. They said they, that she was their favorite. Yeah. Okay, that, I mean, get over it. <laughs> it's such a nothing thing. Although, you know who should be excited about it? And they better not suspend this guy. They better not punish him. Because you know who should be excited about this is the radio station. Like, think about it. Radio doesn't get a lot of heat anymore. You know, radio doesn't get a lot of attention. I'm, I'm sure they still do pretty well in Boston, a big city like that. You still mm -hmm. got a pretty big audience. But I, I think if you get controversy like that, you just leave it alone. Everybody moves on in, you know, a few days to a new controversy, a new thing that they're screaming and shouting about. And then your station gets... A bunch of attention. Perfect. It's a win. Yeah. Uh, Turtle says, I've always associated taking a nip with flasks, but I'm an Elkie. Well, that works too. Not you being See, an Elkie. I'm I call that a swig. I took a swig of something. Yeah. You know, there's is a- Is that farm talk? I don't know. Yeah. Swig is a very farmy kind of a word. I always took a swig. Uh, there's a bar in- Or a Was pole. Yeah. There's a, a bar in Wisconsin Dells uh, that has a name that rhymes with uh, swig. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've heard this. Have you ever heard of the bar? It's it's a real place. You're the one who told me. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's in uh, Wisconsin Dells. I mean, I it's, don't. It's right there on the main drag. I don't feel good saying it. It's the name of the bar. Platform. Look at it. It's right there on the screen. I'm looking. And look at the sign. Look what it says, April. Can you read that sign? Do you want me to read the full thing? Let me pull it up here. Let me pull up a, a big, a big version of. It. There it is. That's a real bar in Wisconsin Dells. It's on Main Street, uh, and. Uh, yeah, you can have a swig with with that guy. See, you won't even say it. <laughs> no, I'm a little... I, I mean, trigger shy, right? We used to say it on radio. I know you did. I, I remember hearing you say it, and I would look at the radio yeah. physically. I'd be like, holy shit. I was an edgy... Did you just say that? <laughs> I was an edgy boy on those airways. I believe I even texted you, like, why would you do that? <laughs> I, I love people who don't know about that place. Yeah, it's 100% real. Here, you know what? People are really entertained by it. I'll put it back up for you. That's real. So, like, imagine a main street, like a mid-sized town's main street, and it's nothing but shops, bars, and restaurants... And that sign is doing that thing where it juts out from the building and you can see it from, you know, way down the sidewalk uh, on the main drive. How, has, how have they not been put on blast by somebody yet? How? Of the, all the things we have gotten offended over in this country, how is that not one of them? I bet you that in terms of a percentage, because there aren't a lot of black people who go to Wisconsin Dells, but as a percentage of what? the... What? Are you saying it's because it's full of water? Um, no, they're all in Branson. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but when it comes to like who takes a picture with that sign, I bet you a higher percentage of black people take a picture with that sign than white people on percentage average. Like let's say, uh, 80% of the people in Wisconsin Dells are white mm. and 15% are black. I'm willing to bet that you have a higher chance that more than 15% of black people are taking a picture with that and less than six, uh, 80% of white people are taking a picture with that. I would take a picture with that. I have taken a picture with that. No, oh, think you're better than me. I have one. Uh, in this regard, yes, absolutely. I've never, ever had the urge to go to the Wisconsin Dells. It's Not fun. Ever. It seems like all I've heard from people is it's re it's, it's so stupidly overpriced, and for that reason, I'm like, okay, I can do other things for less money. I don't remember how poorly priced it was. To be completely honest with, you. I don't. I don't know. Maybe if you do all the boat tours and shit. I have no idea. I've just heard the money's not worth it. Uh, Yule Gibbons says, my favorite term from the radio days was mouth treats because you couldn't say blowjob. Yeah. That's... You could say blowski. How's that any better? <laughs> you could say beach. Well, that was the thing about radio rules. They were so stupid because like you could say everything but the literal 
Yeah, you can get thing. the closest like word to it. You can say the thing that makes everybody think about it. Can you say sex? I don't remember if you, you can, can say, say sex, sex, right? But you can't you can't describe penetration or an orifice being per, uh, perforated. Sex kind of say. describes that it's all encompassing. No, but you can't say like, "Oh, my penis went into her vagina." I don't know why you need to say that on uh, radio for the for the goof. But uh, yeah, you could say having socks. Can you say your dick went in the butt? No, dicks cannot go in butts in radio. Dicks cannot can go in vaginas. Can you say butt stuff? Yes, you can say butt stuff on the radio, but you can't say dick I, in the butt. So you can say I participated in butt stuff. Yes. Okay. I mean, most stations would probably go, what are you doing? Why would you say something like that? Not the one I worked at. Nobody cared. I saw this tweet yesterday before it even became a trending thing. Ooh, I saw this too. And I went, before it even became a trending thing yesterday, I saw it while I was prepping and I went, ooh, this is going to be spicy. Mm -hmm. It's been viewed 13 million times. And it's a tweet from Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks. The lovely, happy broad. The lovely, happy, just having a good time. Anna Kasparian, the female Kevin Brennan of political talk. Uh, she you could not have put that better. <laughs> she hates everything, doesn't like anybody, gets no joy from anything. And uh, look, better late than never, I say. Uh, Anna Kasparian has always been a very liberal very feminist, mm. very bitchy human being. Little cunty. Still cunty uh, with this tweet. It is a remarkably, a remarkably cuntily worded tweet. Mm. But she has turned the cannon back inside the ship and fired in at her own. Oh, uh, yep. Uh, this is fun to see. She writes, uh, I'm a woman. Please don't ever refer to, for, refer to me as a person with a uterus, birthing person, or person who menstruates. How do people not realize how degrading this is? You can support the trans community without doing this shit. Now, as someone who hopes this kind of talk becomes commonplace oh, yeah. so I can sit back and watch all of the fireworks mm -hmm. because there are far more women out there than there are trans people. Thank and you. I appreciate that. You're welcome. And uh, But trans people are infinitely times more bitchy than women are. A lot more insufferable. A sure. lot more bitchy. Like, women can be bitchy, but you have to remember, trans women are basically gay men. And gay men can get super bitchy. Especially with the broads. <laughs> yeah. So, you're never gonna see straight men versus trans community. We're too loud and angry, we scare them, and they don't want to talk to us. Well, and you start dabbling in it and wearing dresses. Yeah, right, and then you tuck your sack back, and you're like, this doesn't feel that bad. Maybe they're onto something. <laughs> uh, but women versus trans people, now that's going to be a fun fight to watch because that's just going to be passive-aggressive comments, snarky, snipey comments about clothing. Condescending. At the word cunt used 850 times. It's going to be a bloodbath, figuratively speaking. They're all synced up. They're all synced up. I'm, you know, you got trans women handing Anna Kasparian a tampon and they're like, you shouldn't even fucking have one of those. It's going to be great. Anna Kasparian versus Dylan Mulvaney. Happy punch boxing. Keemstar can put it on. Sam Hyde can train Anna Kasparian. It could be fun. But Aaron, one of them has a biological advantage. Uh, have you seen Dylan Mulvaney? Look, <laughs> I usually say... <laughs> You're right. I know. Look, I usually say, hey, biological <laughs> men should not be fighting women. I wave that when it's Dylan Mulvaney. I could take a Dylan Mulvaney. Yeah. It's a little person. That's what I nicknamed my penis. Dylan Mulvaney. She likes it. She likes it. Dylan likes it or I like no, it? No, you like it. Oh. <laughs> I said she. Right. Yeah. Uh, Anna Kat, so Anna Kasparian tweets that out. And I saw this before it, like, had many comments. Like, I caught this one fresh out of the oven. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. So I came back this morning to take a look at the comments. Oh, boy. Because you got to remember, like, if a Ted Nugent were to tweet this, it would all be people going, yeah, fucking A right, Uncle Ted. America. Yeah, America. Where's your machine gun? Let's go shoot some elk. Pew, pew. Joe Rogan's a pussy. You're the real man, Ted. But Anna Kasparian is, like, an ally. She's a progressive. So for her to write this, people are going to get bitchy. Now, she did run into a problem, <clears throat> excuse me, 
that people run into when they're on her side and they tweet stuff like this. Mm. And this is they've entered no man's land because she's been so shitty to right wing people that none of them want to get her back. No, uh, no, none of them want to defend her, even though she's saying something they agree with. Right. They're not going to play that game of, oh, better late than never. And it's like, no, I hate you. now. Right. She's been so shitty to them that they don't want to defend her. And in a way, she doesn't want them on her side anyway. But then on the other hand, the trans community that's been like down with the shit she says all these years is going to be really angry with her. Because if you don't agree with them 1000 percent of the time, you are a certified Nazi. Like, you're putting people in concentration camps. And a transphobe on top of that. And a transphobe, which is way worse than being a Nazi. So, Anna Kasparian finds herself in a weird no-man's land, and I would like to offer uh, a hand and say this. I am the kind of guy who doesn't play righty-lefty. I'm the kind of guy who doesn't do the political sides thing. If someone gets it right, I give them credit for getting it right. Mm -hmm. If someone gets it wrong, I don't treat them differently based on, you know, how they feel about income tax rates. So with Anna Kasparian, I just like to say, hey, I agree with you. I do too. 100%. You absolutely nailed it. Wonderful. Now, what I would do is I would tweet that and then I would walk away from Twitter, walk away Have from to. my phone and not read any of my notifications for the next three to four weeks. Go on a nice break, nice vacation. Mm -hmm. Don't look at Twitter. I saw this before I fell asleep last night, actually. So yeah. I did get to see some of the heat on it. Uh, Zuby, who's a conservative, uh, I think, music guy, uh, says your si side is going to roast you now. I hope you're ready for the intolerance, to which she said they have the right to speak their piece, mm -hmm. as do I. Now, here's the problem. Anna Kasparian made this tweet. Good tweet. I agree with it. Mm -hmm. Solid. She didn't do the second part of my advice, which was get the fuck off Twitter and don't read the comments. Don't engage. Do not engage. <laughs> she engaged everybody. Not good. There are 1,700 bookmarks on this tweet, 80,000 likes, about 5,300 quotes, and 9,200 retweets. Mm -hmm. So there are a shitload of people liking and sharing this tweet. And she decided to go in and get in the mud with all of them. Uh, Carrie Lake, who's the conservative chick who ran for governor of Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, she writes, a broken clock, dot, dot, dot. Of now, course. that's pretty nice. I mean, Carrie Lake was probably called all sorts of terrible things on the Young Turks. So for her to say a broken clock, meaning mm -hmm. the saying a broken clock is right, right twice, twice a day. Uh, that's about as cordial as it's going to get between those two. Yeah, that's a semi compliment, right? Yeah, how do you think Anna Kasparian responded? I'm guessing she didn't agree with this comment. I think you're an embarrassment to this country and full-blown lunatic. Well, we're healing. <laughs> we're healing. <laughs> wow. Carrie Lake really went out of her way to, like... Not be a cunt. Not be a cunt. And Guess what, what do Anna's... you do? You're a cunt. Anna Kasparian was a cunt about it. Yeah. Uh, the Humanist Report. Now, I don't know who this guy is. He does... Uh... Leftist. Oh, he's a lefty guy? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, he says, I respect you a lot, but this notion that the mere existence of trans-inclusive terms uh, somehow degrades women comes right out of the right's anti-trans war on women playbook. There's a reason why they're praising you for this. Now, just because the, this is why I hate sides. Just because the right says it doesn't make it wrong. Just because the left says it doesn't make it wrong. It's like when uh, conservatives automatically take like a corporation side in something because they're pro-corporation, they're pro-capitalist. But the left is like, hey, these scumbags are taking advantage of their workers and they're being real bags of shit and we should let people know about it so they can make informed consumer decisions. Mm -hmm. And righties are like, oh, why are you anti-business? I see I happen to agree with lefties on shit like that. If a business is being retarded and stupid to their employees, I would like to know about that. I agree. But the right will stand up just because it's business. You know, the left will do that too. They'll come out and like, oh, the right said it. Well, then that's bad. It's like, well, no, you got to think about women. You know, people who have been women their entire lives feel like they're being degraded when they're called people with uteruses. It just sounds like a demeaning term. And it, yes, it is. I don't like it at all. Um, and I don't like that there's this leftist dude here, the humanist report. It's a guy saying, oh, this somehow degrades women. Like, he has yeah. no idea. You're, if you're a man, I think you get to step out of this one. This right. is not for you. Well, Anna Kasparian decided to respond to him, too. Uh, I see. I'd like to imagine that us running a small show on YouTube, uh, that we should have a lot more free time than Anna Kasparian. Anna Kasparian, right. I would like to think, shouldn't have time to go on her Twitter and respond to all these fucking people. 
but she is. And she said to the Humanist Report, hey, Mike, your guy who has no clue what it's like to have your reproductive freedom taken away. But consider what it's like to have the same lawmakers who fail to protect our rights turn around and call us people with uteruses. It's not inclusive if cis women hate it. Good point. It is kind of dehumanizing. Like if I were to go to my doctor and have like a like a physical and a checkup, I don't want him to call me a person with a uterus. Right. How weird I, no, is that? I'm a woman. How is my reproductive shit going? Can I have babies yet? Yeah. You like, know? My doctor, like he doesn't call me a person with a penis. He just gives me a physical and goes, nice dick. I go, thank you. Is that Very how that sweet. goes? Yeah. I always wondered. It's, it's always nice when they come. I, don't, I know he doesn't mean it. But it's nice that he says it's it. It's nice to hear it. Good yeah. effort. It's nice when people say, nice dick. You know You know what? What? Nice dick. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Justin says, my wife shares the same opinion. And Anna Kasparian says, I'm sure a lot of women don't want to be minimized to a bodily function or bodily part. Or body part. Or bodily part. Either Why? Way. <laughs> Can you imagine if we just walked around calling each other, oh, hey, dick, hey, vagina? Yeah. Uh, so this guy, Brandon, he's not happy with what Anna Kasparian wrote. He writes, all right, AK Rowling, chill. Oh. Because he, AK, no, Anna I'm... Kasparian, JK Rowling. See, she wrote the Harry Potter books, and she doesn't think people who were men 20 minutes ago <laughs> should swim against your female swimmer kids. It's, uh, what a bitch. Uh, so continuing on, I think, is that all the responding she did? Well, that's not so bad. Then she responded to like three people. You I was of... worried as I scrolled down, I was going to see Anna Kasparian just in the replies constantly. I'm sure it was kind of tough to walk away from this one, but it's like any other topic on Twitter. Like you realize that you're talking to a bunch of crayon munchers out there that don't actually use their brains for like knowledge. Yeah. They just need a fight and uh, you got to walk away from it sometimes. Yeah, there's... and. Yeah, never apologize for this. Uh, that's Seth Dillon from the Babylon Bee. I like it when, like, lefties are nice to righties when they, you know, come around to something and vice versa when a lefty says something that righties like. I, I like it when they're just not assholes about it and mm -hmm. they just go, hey, welcome to the party. You know, don't apologize for this. We got your back. I also do agree with um, the last section of her tweet where she said you can in fact, support trans people without, like, dehumanizing, like, straight women. Right. You know, like, if I have nothing to do with the trans world, like, why are you applying any of that shit to me? Why right. can't you just call me a woman? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it shouldn't hurt it anyone else. It shouldn't hurt anybody. Yeah. Like, if you want to, if you're a dude, but you want to be called Sally, I'll call you Sally yeah. all day long. Electric Shoes <laughs> says, I'm a woman. I don't want to be called something else. The conversation should end there, and I shouldn't need to give further reasoning. Yeah, right. the fact that... uh Anna Kasparian even felt the need to explain herself on this one is a little odd. You know, people like, how dare you write that? It's like, fuck, who, who gives a shit? You know, leave, leave me the fuck alone. I, all I said was don't call me a person with a uterus. And people are like, why are you bullying trans people? It's like, I, I'm starting to think that maybe there might be a little mental illness at play. Well, it's kind of what we said starting the show about uh, Brittany Venti's channel getting nuked, too. Like, what she's saying might not be wrong, but you know the platform and what's about to happen to you. Exactly. Right? Twitter is just... It's a bunch of people with their heads exploding. Uh, Mika Mills, thank you very much. I did change my banner. Uh, thanks to you. They did say that it said Wednesday morning goal instead of Thursday. Oh, there you go. and you were Tuesday the other day. Uh, I don't even know what day it is anymore. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, 240 bucks away from today's goal. There's uh, Streamlabs. There's PayPal. Thank you guys very much for keeping me in check on that one. Uh, John Hahn says, Aaron is a sperm consuming male. That is, first of all, that's not how I want to be identified. So, wait, second of all, it's not true. Well, not true, I repeat, not true. Thank you, Frankie. Yes. Um, maybe it is true, though, because you don't excrete sperm anymore. You do absorb it, so your body technically is a sperm-consuming If you have a vasectomy, body. you do... <laughs> oh, that's a good point. You don't eject my it My body anymore. consumes... But it's my own sperm. So my body consumes my own sperm, so it's kind of different. You're cannibalizing your sperm. I'm cannibalizing my own sperm. Uh, we got talking about that and now I forgot what I was looking up. Oh yeah. Young Turks, uh, sperm, uh, people are sa somebody said in the every chat day, that, the young, Turks ah, somebody said the young Turks numbers are in the shitter. So who cares what Anna Kasparian says? Oh my God, they are. Holy shit. 
I don't know what they usually are. The Young Turks have uh, 5.36 million subscribers. And on YouTube, the internet falls for deep fake of Trump arrest, 88,000 views. But then everything else, 18, 17, 45, 19, 45, 34, 17, 28... Was that Boy, if we, could, if we could just double our morning show numbers, we're getting close to the Young Turks over here. Do they live? Okay, they don't live stream their show on YouTube, so there's that. Oh, wow, so... Why wouldn't you live stream this show? I think they do. I think they do it on their own platform. Oh, okay. Wow, their numbers really are in the shitter. Well, they got a, they got a nice little bump, right? I guess so. Uh, right, so moving on from the nuclear groundwater and shit that we got leaking in that's way too close to home yeah that's you know a few miles away from where we live uh let's go to something johnny sent me now if you're a big uh pitbull owner if you're a big pitbull defender this is gonna rile you up but i but i think you could also have some fun with us as you know i am not a big pitbull guy uh what? The, the artist or the dog. Uh I, I Which do, is your favorite though? The artist. Okay. The artist doesn't eat children, as far as I know. <laughs> Unless he's into some Illuminati thing. I'm not really sure. Sick joke. But uh I don't really like pit bulls. Uh you know, I there is an argument that it's all the owner. I don't buy that argument. I think the dog genetically and through the, you know, the the breeding process uh does have more aggression than many other breeds. Now, scientifically, that is borne out. That mm -hmm. is accurate. That is true. Uh, over 60% of uh, dog attacks that end in hospitalizations are done by pit bulls. Uh, most of the deadly dog attacks are done by pit bulls. So it's hard for me to believe that it's just bad owners. I mean, are these the? Uh, is this the one breed of dog that just has all the shitty dog owners in the world? I, I don't... I obviously agree with you. I mean... You can have good pit bulls, I'm sure, but right. when these dogs are put under some sort of pressure where any dog any dog might be upset, there is a new level that pit bulls will go to. They're, yeah, they're, in my opinion, they're a bit more dangerous. They're predisposed to be more angry and aggressive. Yeah, so I, I would say that when it comes to uh, the pit bull thing, I definitely upset a lot of people. Yes. Right. I, yeah. I've I upset a lot of people with my take on pit bulls, but that's okay. We can have that disagreement. You can still love the show. Johnny sent me something yesterday that I kind of wanted to just play for pit bull owners and go, "Come on." So you don't have to say it. Somebody else can. Right. You can't find me three minutes and five seconds worth of news stories talking about golden retrievers or even Rottweilers, wiener dogs that have this kind of uh, <laughs> that have this kind of uh, news presence. Here we go. Let's uh, again. Johnny K sent me this yesterday. Very very funny. Still trying to get to the bottom of what could have possibly happened when a woman was mauled by her own pit bulls at an animal hospital. Hatfield doesn't know why her pit bull snapped. But, but and everyone is at a loss to explain why the dog snapped. <laughs> he says the dog has never acted aggressively in the past oh, and has what? no idea what set the dog off. The father says his son went into the kitchen to talk to his mom and the dog attacked. Nobody knows why. That is the thing. They just kind of snap one day. Every time a pit bull snaps and rips the throat out of some little kid, everyone goes, no idea what happened. The dog never showed any aggression before. It's like God flipped a switch in their brain and they're like, Whoop. yeah, time to eat. <laughs> hey, Rowdy, it's time to come home, buddy. Got you loud and clear, boss. <laughs> ah! Rips the throat out how it all ends it's like i'm sorry but like every time i hear people go oh it's the owners it's the owners then why is it the same way every time why is it every owner goes i swear to christ i had no idea he was always really cool nothing happened yeah i woke up this morning i had 10 fingers i was petting my dog the dog's really nice i went to bed this morning i got three fingers left i don't know what the fuck happened to the dog blacked out they also say the pet was a loving animal and has never done anything like this. Week. The family had reportedly owned the pets for more than eight years without any incident, but something happened. We just believe that maybe the dogs may have been agitated. Uh, it's the only Aww. thing that seemed to make sense. Like, parents were in bed. Yeah, you know, uh, sometimes our chihuahua gets agitated. You know what he does? He goes and grabs a blue toy rope and starts throwing it around the living room until we play fetch with him. 
And then, he, then he tugs on it a little right. bit. That's what happens when he gets agitated. Uh, apparently, this dog just eats a guy. With their baby and dog watching TV. At some point, the mom coughed and startled the dog. She <laughs> Can you imagine just... I, I'm sorry. Yeah, some <laughs> of these... You're dead. Some of these pit bull stories just make me feel like, God damn, it's like you're a prisoner in your own home. I've, you and I have seen pit bull aggression before, right? You've yeah. seen it. I've seen it. I've been in my own kitchen before and had one bite at me. Like imagine, I mean, imagine your, why did you have a pit bull in your kitchen? It wasn't my pit bull. Oh, okay. I was like, Jesus that Christ. didn't change the story though. But like you're, <laughs> you're sitting there and you're like, oh, if I cough, this death machine could rip my son's head off. Right. Oh, if <laughs> I set this glass down on the table just wrong. Might be all over for me. Maybe that's what it is. All pit bull attacks start with, coaster. Ah! <laughs> You're not using it. The dog's just trying to enforce drink placement etiquette. Sure. <laughs> and it only knows one oh, way of enforcement. He doesn't want water rings on the table. He just The pit bulls hate water rings. Maybe this woman coughed, and when she coughed, she didn't go like this. She didn't cough into There's her elbow. There's a spittle launch. He saw the spittle launch, and he went, germs! The dog was just really insensitive about COVID. I have to kill the kid before your spittle does. Yeah, that's right. Virus detected. <laughs> Don't worry, son. It's quicker this way. <laughs> he was home alone with the dogs in their sats of house when she knocked a pillow from the couch and something set them off. I had a pit bull wrapped around my neck. And <laughs> not Jesus as, not, Christ. Not as good as mink. That is how Jake Hudson's mother died. Yes. Last night's storms may be to blame for a pit bull attack. 60-year-old Nellie Davis died when a pit bull in her apartment broke out of its cage in a frenzy in Mulder. <laughs> there was a thunderstorm. The dog broke out of his kennel and fucking killed this lady. You know what our dog does when there's a thunderstorm? He snuggles his blanket a little harder and he sleeps. Right. You know what a golden retriever does? Just fucks off and does whatever golden retrievers do. Looks out the window a little. The dog is just sitting there in his kennel going, and then finally, boom, just out of the kennel, rips this lady's face off. He's like, but imagine like the thought process of a dog. So a pit bull does this to an old lady because he's tense about the storm. Mm -hmm. And once he kills the old lady, he just kind of goes, oh, much better. <laughs> it's like cracking your neck uh, that you really needed. Uh, I feel like oh. a million bucks now. Thanks. Can you imagine you're just trying to comfort the stupid dog too? Like it's thundering yeah. and loud noise. You're probably trying to like, no, no, it's okay. And then he just fucking eats your arm. You're like the one before this said, oh, she knocked a, cow a pillow down from the couch. That doesn't even make noise. Yeah. <laughs> your dog might be psycho. That's what I'm saying. Your dog might have a brain problem. We, you can't find these videos with Labradors. No. Okay. It doesn't exist. 77-year-old Nancy Newberry, who was killed by her family's pit bull while she tried to give him a pill during feeding time. Then Kamiko was taken to the hospital and later died. What did that Aww. baby do to that dog? Probably giggled. I <laughs> Just made the little cute baby coos. The, the baby took her first steps, to which the dog was offended by, and ripped the baby's head off. I'm told Mana was part of the family for nine years, had never done this before, and is considered a good family dog. Dumb I mean, bitch. not really anymore. <laughs> the family is blindsided by the attack. What could have triggered? Imagine how the baby what feels. What could have triggered his dog to attack? Attack his wife, Angela Smith. It was so vicious, she died. He says that dog should be walking right coming. now. No. He was the sweetest. Sweetest dog ever. Never in a million years thought that he, this would happen. What? Really? So how many times do you have to never in a million... How many never in a million years dog attacks have to happen in a two-week uh, window for you to think that maybe this isn't one in a million? Everyone that owns pit bulls just has a ticking time bomb in their house. Right? Honestly, you don't know. What happened that night? It never happened like that before. They're not vicious dogs. They're really nice dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah. Watch it eat your face. Yeah. It's really nice dogs. They're really not bad. Uh, we have a corpse in that living room that says different. Well, I mean, they must have done some. I mean, really, um, rape victims in the 50s and people who are killed by pit bulls are treated the same way. What were they wearing? What did they do? Were they asking for it? Yeah, did they go down the wrong neighborhood? They're gentle. I don't know what came over them. Something like unprovoked. Um... 
This dog has no history of aggression. But he's still surprised something like this involving those his dog yeah. has now happened. My dogs were not for fighting. They were family dogs. They're indoor dogs. No, your dogs were for fighting. Historically. That's why they snap like that. Mm. That's the only thing I could think of. That dog slept with my mom every night. So I don't know what set that dog off. I don't know what happened. <laughs> my pit bull attacked my wife for no reason. And anybody got any pit bull to get rid of them because I never thought it would take my wife. Oh, oh, that's fucked up. Yikes. These dogs like children. They never had a fight. They ate out the same bowls. I don't know what happened. I can't believe it. Because they're so good with people, you know. You think you know them, but you don't, you know. She just... Dog just went crazy. We were just trying to go to the bathroom, and he just went berserk. I your shit smell bad. <laughs> that dog kept that fucking attitude contained yeah. for fucking ever for maybe a that's, decade. Maybe that's what it is. These pit bulls, <laughs> they're, fed up. Are, they're actually holding in a bunch of resentment and shit. And they, they're, they're actually really good at holding it for years. Right. But it just explodes one day and it's just something tiny. Like, <laughs> get the fucking pillow on the couch, bitch. Pit, pit bulls are prime examples of why you need to. Get your problems off your chest like right. regularly and not bottle it up. That's why pit bulls, you know, they gotta like play with toys and get their aggression out because they hold it in. It's like their toys are nukes, though. Right. <laughs> they they yeah. gnaw on, like gotta, the tip of a nuke. You gotta get them a suitcase nuke from Kreplakistan so that they can have something to play with in the backyard. <laughs> uh, that's where all that tritium water came from. It was actually pit bull chew toys. Oh, they chewed on the pipes. They did. Uh, but like, imagine a pit bull, like he's sitting there being really nice. They're like, oh, he just sits there and just kind of, he's just kind of mellow. Meanwhile, you go inside the dog's head and he goes, they feed me the wrong food. They take weird shits. They break too many glasses. The kids are too loud. Everybody's fucking with me. Why am I here? Ah! <laughs> they look at me weird. That tone they're using. <laughs> God damn it. It's so dismissive. That baby will not stop crying. Don't they know what I'm capable of? It's time to show them. I'll wait for my moment. She's combing her hair. Get her! <laughs> They're fucking Anakin killing the younglings. <laughs> yeah. It's over. We went to go and play with him, and something in him just switched. Like, I, I don't know what it was, but it just switched. And he... He went after my dad. He was a loving dog. and He was not a vicious dog. But how he snapped, we don't understand. I love how it's a dog, and that's the end of the clip. But like, thank you, Johnny, for sending that to me. And that's just one percent of the pitbull attack video. <laughs> right, that's just one percent of them. Oh. So I, I love how, like, with, with stuff like that, the pitbulls will maul someone to death. They will maul somebody to death, and then the people who own them will be like, "Well, that one doesn't count. Mm -hmm. Like the rest, like they're always good. This time it was just." When it's a pit bull, they just snapped, you know? It is. It's always that same storyline. And if you, I don't know if you've ever witnessed what it looks like for a pit bull to get angry, but their eyes, like, fucking change. They're yeah. They're demonic. It is scary. S Steven Dube says the pit bull snap is their existential crisis. Yeah. There's a, <laughs> what is life? Is there anything after this? Is there even a heaven? I only live 15 years. I'm going to be buried in the ground. I'm going to be nothing. Why am I even here then? If I'm only going to be here for 10 to 15 years and then after that I'm going to be returned to the earth, then what is this brief life other than a unholy taunt from the devil himself? <laughs> Why are they brushing their hair so loud? Ah! They are literally the hounds of hell. They are just, they just become so tense Ugh. with stress an existential crisis that they have to eat somebody's throat. That's why their muscles are so dense. They're yeah. just always tense and yeah. rigid. <laughs> I have to open their throat to create a valve for the existential problems to get out. <laughs> oh. mm -hmm. Pyramid nice. 7 says they are wrestling with guilt. Book recommendation, The Gift of Fear, Gavin DeBecker. I don't, I don't know that book. Uh, Scarface says, I hate you right now, Aaron, but I'm still laughing. See, isn't that the point? It's like the never-ending mm. story. If we're both going to die, let's fight. Look, I don't... If you want to own pit bulls, that's fine and whatever because they're not in my home, but it's like I wish you could just acknowledge it. Yeah, they are a little more aggressive than the usual mutt, you know? Uh, Kate Golem says, never own a pet that can kick your ass, Norm MacDonald. Yeah, that's why we had to get rid of slavery. Actually, I'm joking. I, it's because it was wrong. Wow. I was so offended by that joke. I couldn't talk. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, fact you says seems like a pet tiger would be safer. It would always be in a cage. I don't know, maybe like a lady tiger, you know? Dude, I got kicked in the head by a horse and I got rid of all them bitches. That's right. That almost killed me. Then she didn't she couldn't uh she didn't know anything about space after that. Poor horse kicked the space right out of her head. <laughs>